Focus stacking is an important part of product photography. Almost every photo that I take has some sort of photo stacking that's involved in order to get it completely in focus from front to back. Sony has added with the new Sony a7R Mark V has added internal focus stacking. It's really important that they added that internally because before you had to just manually focus to do it. You couldn't use Helicon remote. It didn't support the camera. So doing it manually works, but it's, it's not the best for fine tuning um, focus capture. So having it internal is a game changer for uh, a product photographer using Sony equipment. I've laid down an iPad I don't have a macro lens on there. I just picked the one that I happen to have, which is a 24 to 70. And I've, as you can see, I've set it up right around the camera and we'll do a little focus stacking sequence from the beginning to the end. And we'll use Helicon Focus to stitch it all together. Because I'm using strobes, the image is really dark. I'm at F11, so the ambient light is not showing through. So normally you would go into your settings here so we go to menu and we go to live view display setting. And normally I would turn the settings off and that would allow us to get a nice exposure just for viewing. It wouldn't simulate what we're gonna get, but it would allow me to view the scene. But unfortunately that is disabled when you're in focus bracketing. Focus bracketing is in drive mode. And as you can see, look at that looks great it's showing me a really nice preview but as soon as i go into focus bracketing that is disabled so we have focus bracketing set we have the width so we have all the way down to narrow for standard and we have wide this is the overlap that each shot will have with the next shot uh, once you stitch it together you get like little bands that means that you need to narrow it down so there's more overlap and you get a crisper image. If you go all the way up to wide, uh, there's more of a chance of getting banding, but some shots don't need it. If you're shooting at F 2.8, you're probably gonna wanna go all the way down to narrow, but I'm shooting at F 11, I think standard is fine. And then in here is where you pick how many shots. I did some tests and I came up with 36. And then you have your focus bracketing order, which just means from, from your first capture all the way to the back versus the other way around. It's just an order thing, no big difference. Exposure smoothing, since we're in the studio, I have got that turned off. We can do that in software if it's needed. And then shooting interval. This is where I picked five seconds. You can do shortest one second. I had it at three seconds initially, and this is how it pauses between each shot. So it doesn't just do a rapid fire, which the strobes wouldn't be able to handle. So I picked five seconds, four could have worked, but I don't see a custom option. And then you can make a custom folder, which is really nice that it's nice and handy right there. I left it in the current folder because I'm tethered. Now that we've gone over all the settings, let's start our capture. I won't capture from the camera, but I'll capture from the computer. We're now in capture one, and I'm gonna take a look at the images and we'll send it over, we'll process it out and send it over to Helicon Focus and run it through and see how well it did. This is our first one here. So as you can see, when we zoom in, our focus is down here in the front. And then as you go up, it's out of focus. But if we go all the way down to our last shot, then it's in focus at the top and out of focus in the middle. And then all these other shots are all the different steps along the way. Go up a little more and it starts to, you can see it starts to get in focus along here. Okay, well, let's see how well it does. So we will process these out. So I will select all of these images. We'll go to export and I'll save it as an 8-bit TIFF. 
just going to do this. This is third time I've done it. And we'll do export. So those are exporting out, as you can see here. We will just select all of these, drag them into Helicon Focus. You see them all here on the side. Now there's different methods that you can pick, A, B, and C. For the most part, B just works perfectly. I would usually always pick B. And then we're just going to leave it at the default settings and hit render. You can already tell it's doing pretty well here. Yeah, you can see this, like there's no banding here as it goes along, which is really good. That means we had enough overlap when we were capturing it. Okay, so that looks really good. We'll go up here to save. And let's save that. The default name kind of gives you all the different parameters that you used. And I'm just going to go stack final. Let's save that. And now let's open that up in Photoshop. See how it did. Okay, we're now looking at 100%. So we'll go down here. And this is a teeny bit out of focus here. I could have gone further. But you can see the texture of the paper looks really good. And then we come up to the camera here. And this looks really nice. You can see there's some dust. This wasn't a brand new unit. But it did, pretty, it did pretty well. I mean, the texture has come through really nicely. There's no banding, which is something that happens when you don't have enough overlap uh, between each shot that you take. And that's kind of why I wanted to capture this uh, iPad, is it has this texture. And if, if you don't have enough overlap, you'll get banding. And I don't see that here. In conclusion, I think Sony did a great job adding focus stacking to the A7R Mark V. I think it's, it's implemented really well and it has great customization. So in my book, it's a winner.